one of the most important songs in the Metroid franchise has sadly been rewritten out of its history almost entirely. It's a brilliant song for the technology it was produced on and the perfect accompaniment to the beautiful little moment that will forever now remain lost to the rest of the franchise. Metroid 2 The Return of Samus was considered by many a downgrade of a game when it released on the handheld console, the Game Boy. The black and white device was a weaker system even than the original Famicom, and the sound card provided is a perfect example of this. Even the cheapest TV set in the early 1990s had speakers far superior to the tiny little ones on the Game Boy. And whilst the first game had a soundtrack composed by Hirokazu Tanaka that tried to remove any distinction between music and sound effects, the second had a much more traditional selection of beeps and bop tunes, composed by Ryoji Yoshitomi. Given that the Metroid franchise has remixed and reinterpreted music liberally throughout its history, almost no tracks from the sequel were ever reused or remixed until the game was remade on the Nintendo 3DS 26 years later. And for me, the most important of songs in the original game is the one that plays at the very end of your run. Throughout the game, Samus has been descending, bringing death and destruction on the Metroid creatures as she slaughters her way deeper and deeper, until eventually arriving at the very depths of the planet and the lair of the Metroid Queen. A short fight ensues, Samus showing no mercy against this monstrosity, until eventually, with a defiant final scream, the Metroid Queen begins to crumble away, clearing the path for Samus to advance into the hatchery. The moment you enter this room, the Metroid Hatchling theme begins to play. It's an uplifting and somewhat cathartic song, a moment of respite after the battle Samus had already fought. It signifies what would later turn out to be the most important emotional moment in the series, a point where Samus finds a baby Metroid just on the point of hatching, and rather than put this evil creature, the last one in the universe, out of its misery, Samus decides to show its mercy. Is it nature or nurture that makes these creatures so dangerous? Not only does she show mercy, she allows the creature to imprint upon her. It follows her around like a doting child, clearing aside rocks and opening up new paths as she climbs her way back towards the surface, upwards back to the light. After an entire game built around going deeper and deeper, the player finally gets to ascend, a few moments to climb back to the world above with this beautiful little theme playing in the background. There are no enemies in this section. There's no rush and no obstacles. Just time to reflect upon your mission as you reach the end of the game. The song accompanies you from the moment you discover the egg, up, up, through the tunnel to the surface, and right up until the moment you climb aboard your ship. Mission accomplished. The song has some weird properties that make it stand out. First of all, it switches between a three note and a four note time signature several times as it builds in complexity. This is a very unusual choice for music composition, but it somehow suits the chiptune original well. The entire song is played in the E flat major key, and the opening passage's main melody has a rising scale of four half notes before descending to land for a full beat on the E note each time. The phrase repeats four times before it switches to the 4-4 time signature and transitions to a complete rising scale four times before the time signature reverts back to three notes time. The main melody is deceptively simple, but the backing notes grow ever more complex as the song continuously loses syncopation the further it goes in. The tune itself never gains any more complexity than those two simple phrases, but with the echoing repetition, it loses itself into some form of serene chaos. The song is not entirely lost, however, but in the 3DS remake, its meaning is removed entirely. For a start, in the remix, it has a very different flavour, using a more ethereal and industrial instrumentation set to match the soundscape that has accompanied the series ever since Metroid Prime. It does not play when you encounter the egg, or whilst the creature hatches and imprints itself on Samus. The song plays in the very first room after leaving the hatchery, and it lasts only as Samus climbs back to the surface. However now, the cavern is not empty. Rather than the peace and serenity of a mission done, there is a final chance to hunt for the missing items and refill your energy, because the remake has gone and added a new final boss. 
I'm not criticising the choice to add this extra content at the end of the game, and neither am I dismissive of the idea to compose new music as Samus encounters the innocent little creature. I am, however, sad that the significance of this first piece of music, the brief catharsis as you climb to the surface, has been lost entirely. The song used to be a signpost that made everything that had come before it special, to herald the accomplishment of slaying the Metroid Queen. But now, she's just another boss like any other. Nothing special anymore. Only on that original ancient piece of handheld technology, Nintendo's original Game Boy, can the original intention of the song be truly appreciated. And there, it really is a seriously strong soundtrack.